freedom to speak because it's this little 80 year old woman handing out these flyers at the abortion clinic. Do I think she should be able to do that? Sure, why not? You betcha. You betcha. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Ask him. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Tell I appreciate me. that. Thank you. And now we need a judge How yeah. yeah. can you be a conservative yeah, no. and be an atheist? What a fantastic yeah. question. It's a wonderful question. Because now give me a fantastic answer. Because conservatism and Christianity are not synonyms. Okay? I'm not talking about Christianity. I'm saying how can you be a conservative and be an atheist? I'm not so talking about Christianity. Because I'm talking about conservative and Christianity are not synonyms. Not Christianity. Not God. I'm talking about God. If you're an atheist, you don't believe in God. Right. Right, okay. And so and I this, believe in this small nation, government. This, yeah, You're going to let me nation. finish my sentence. If okay. you're going to ask me a question, you okay. must let me speak. All right, let's speak. I believe in small government. I believe in a strong military. I believe in gun rights. I believe in everything that you want to do should be your right. I believe the government's job is to stand back and charge you as few taxes as possible and give you as much protection as you need to live your life as you see fit. That is conservatism. That's this guy's conservatism, Barry Goldwater. The whole concept that you need to be anti-abortion, anti-gay rights, anti-marriage equality, anti-death with dignity, that's not conservatism. That is theocracy masquerading as conservatism. It's well, not every, not every, not every conservative believes in all of that. Of course. But let me say this, uh, we'll take your vote and God bless you. <laughs> you have to run away with God bless you. Don't, of course, don't do the God one, bless you. one nation Ex under God. No, accept me as an equal and as a partner. Don't do the whole you're going to be like me thing. Just be you different than me. We're different. We have different views, but we're still equal. Tell me about your version of the Founding Fathers. The important point is they made a secular country, and it's a country that we should preserve because they were right. We should all be equal. We should all be equal under the eyes of the law, whether we're Christians or atheists or Muslims or Hindus. That's the American way. That's the great American melting pot, and that's where conservatism should be residing. But instead, it's residing in the Jesus, Jesus doctrine of Jesus, and Jesus wrote the Constitution, and Moses was a founding father. The atheists and the non-Christians are running in droves from Christianity, from, from conservatism, because of the overt Christianity in conservatism. It shouldn't be like that. We should be back to where it should, we should be back to where we were before, where we are a small government with a strong military who protects individuals that lets them live their lives as they see fit, no matter who they are or what they think about God. If you don't believe in religion, what do you believe in? Humanity. You, me, I believe in us, I believe in America, I believe in my wife, I believe in lots of things. I just don't believe in anything supernatural. I don't believe in anything that goes against everything we know without proof. If you're going to give me something, if you're going to tell me that the laws of physics don't always apply, I'm going to ask you for proof of that. If you're going to tell me that you know of a man who can fly, for instance, I'm going to say, okay, you gotta show me a man who can fly. And if you say, well, I don't have to show you a man who can fly because you don't know everything in the universe, therefore you, don't, you can't prove that a man can't fly because you don't know everything. Well, you're talking in circles. You're not, you're not using any sort of scientific reasoning. And when you talk about an, uh, a god, you're talking about a person, you're talking about a being that breaks far more laws of physics than a flying man. You're talking about a, a being that can create and destroy energy with his brain. You better have some good proof of that. And in the history of the world, the amount of proof for the supernatural is zero. If you don't believe in religion, where do you get your moral guideposts? Because religion prescribes how you're supposed to act. And without it, you're, you can do anything you want. And, and, and the fact is that that's the truth. But the, the, the answer is that we all get our morality the same way, okay? Morality does not come from religion. Morality comes from within, from our society, and then religion takes the credit. You're a good person because of religion. Here, here's your collection plate. You're a good person, you have that hair because of religion. Here's the collection plate, it's the same thing. Religion is taking credit where it's not due. You and I get our morals from the same place. That's why atheists are moral people, and Christians, and Jews, and Muslims, we're all moral people relative 
to our surroundings. That's why when we look at ISIS, we see immoral people, but they think they're acting very morally. They think they're doing the right thing. They think we're the immoral ones. When it comes down to it, morality is individual and it's shaped by our society. And people go into church and they either hear what they agree with and they say, okay, church gave me the morality, or they hear what they don't agree with and what do they do? They change churches. And then they find a church that agrees with their morality and they say, oh, look, my church gave me more morality. So church does not give morality, it simply takes credit for it. All of the great genocides in, in, in history have been committed by atheists, they say. Uh, Pol Pot, Mao, Hitler, Stalin. What do you have to say about that? Bad people do bad things. Uh, in the history, of, as far as I know, nobody has done any bad in the name of atheism. Nobody has committed any mass murders in the name of atheism. Hitler, of course, wasn't an atheist. Hitler was a Catholic, and if you read Mein Kampf, you can read it in his own writing. Stalin was definitely an atheist. So was Mao, so was Pol Pot. They were despots. They were leaders. They were horrible people. But so was Charles Taylor and Mobuto Seiko, who murdered lots and lots of people because they were also despots, but they were atheists. The commonality is the despotism. It's the leadership. It's the criminal mind. It's not the atheism. If you want to blame it on atheism, you look at the federal prison population where atheists are a tiny, tiny relative minority compared to the vast amounts of Christians in jail today. So American Atheist was founded in 1963 by Madeleine Murray O'Hare. We're the nation's oldest nonprofit organization by and for the civil rights of atheists. We're here today to spread the crazy notion that conservatism is not a synonym for Christianity and that you can be conservative and not be Christian. And that when the two are conflated, when conservatism becomes a vehicle to push Christianity, non-Christians are pushed away. And they're being pushed away by the tens of millions because theocracy is masquerading as conservatism. And we have to stop that. Um, we have to call conservatism back to what it was back in the Goldwater days when it was about small government, strong military, and low taxes and not the big government issues of going into people's bedrooms, going into people's wedding chapels, going into people's doctor's office. That's big government, it's not small government. Now just a few days ago, the Republican Christians in Idaho uh, started an effort to make Idaho overtly Christian, a Christian state. Now, put the, the legality of that to the side and just think of what that says to non-Christian atheists. It says we're second class. And if you're given a choice between a candidate who overtly wants you to be second class and one who doesn't, where are you gonna vote? By our calculations, between 17 and 20 million conservative atheists in this country are voting Democrat every year because of self-preservation, because of concern, because they don't want to be second-class citizens. They don't want the government coming in and teaching Christianity to their children in the public schools. They don't want science classes dumped down because it disagrees with religion. They want a small government and a strong military and low taxes, and they're voting Democrat anyways because of self-defense. It's not right. What, cons what conservatism needs to do is divorce itself once again from Christianity and become a party for all people of all faiths. Tell me what happened in the history of your organization, because there was a murder. What, what's the story? So, with? Madeline Murray O'Hare founded the organization in 1963. Um, and in 1996, she and her son and her granddaughter were kidnapped. And they were locked in a hotel room in San Antonio, Texas. The son, the, they were all adults, uh, the son was forced to withdraw money from American atheists, turn it into gold coins, and put it in a locker. Then Madeline, her son, and her granddaughter were murdered, dismembered, and buried in a shallow grave. The gold, ironically, was stolen from the thieves, was stolen from the murderers, and spent by common thugs. Those common thugs came forward and admitted it. Um, the murderers were found. They led, the, they led the police to the bodies. The bodies were found. The case is closed. One of the murderers is dead. The other murderer is still in prison, serving the rest of his life.